Hello and welcome to Cat Ellinger's Confessions of a Cine Slut. This was a column I started at Diabolique magazine, a written column, which soon, over the last summer and over the past several months, developed into a Patreon project. If you like what you see here, there is much more of this on my Patreon. Vlogs, video essays, written essays, exclusive commentaries and stuff like that. But this is just the column brought into video form to be more like the stuff that I do on the Patreon. And for subscribers of that Patreon, you get early access to these videos. I usually go in themes and this month I am celebrating satanic feminism and some of my favourite films to come into that bracket. And what I mean by that are films which use a satanic figure or themes of the occult or witchcraft or paganism or even the bestial aspects that Judeo-Christian religion tends to push down in women because women are still very repressed through their sexuality, there's still double standards, we're still expected to subscribe to this dichotomy of good girl, bad girl. Uh, the films that use a, like a more bestial form of sex as a stand-in for those satanic aspects. And Per Faxnald actually wrote a huge book on the history of satanic feminism right back to Adam and Eve and then all the way through the occult through the centuries and through literature, which is an incredible book. And I'm using that theme really to look at the, the idea of liberation that comes up, especially in genre film when it's connected to sex and the occult. And today's film I've decided to focus on is Valerie in a Week of Wonders from 1970. Dobro noc, smart, Sladce spí, až se probudíš, má lásko, nevyzrám This film is largely regarded the last film in the Czech New Wave and it came after the Prague Spring. It came in that period, in that shift when the communist government started to really clamp down 
on subversion in that had been seen in the Czech New Wave. And Valerie in a Week of Wonders kind of sneaks in under the radar because it's pitched as a gothic fantasy film and there was a lot of gothic and fantasy made in those in that 70s period in Czechoslovakia some incredible fantasy and fairy tale film as well Valerie in a Week of Wonders though is, is so subversive it is based on a surrealist novel or novella I should say by Vitislav Nezval and it's quite faithful to that original novella as well directed by Yaromel Yiresh the thing that is so incredible about it though is the screenplay was produced uh, or co-produced between Yiresh and Esther Krumbakova and Krumbakova is somebody who I constantly find myself singing her praises at the start of her career she emerges in the Czech New Wave largely largely credited for costume and script but it was often so much more than that she would often have a big creative input she would work very closely with actors and directors and work very closely in that early part of her career with Vera Hitilova on films like Fruit of Paradise which is like a like a feminist reworking of Adam and Eve talking of Adam and Eve and daisies and Krumbakova's work she actually was blacklisted in the 70s and unable to work in film under the Soviet communist regime in Czechoslovakia which was really sad but she was such a fucking talent and it's her work on this screenplay I think that brings Yuresh's film in line with some of those films by Hitilova you can always see Krumbakova's stamp her trademark on the things that she worked on or in co collaboration with other directors and there often was this very potent feminine energy to the to the work that she did Valerie in a Week of Wonders is a gothic fairy tale it's very abstract it's very ambiguous where we have the titular character Valerie played by Yaroslava Shalarova he was about 14, 15 at the time of filming. She has this wonderful sense of innocence about her. She is a titular Valerie who wakes up one morning to her first period and finds that the world is changing around her. It's part vampire film. Her grandmother, she finds out, makes a, a pact with this priest who's also a vampire and this isn't spoilers I don't think you can spoil a film like Valerie because it is just so avant-garde and strange and ambiguous you know it's not really a narrative story at all it's about a celebration of the sublime of mood of energy it's, it's more to do with that but Valerie finds out her grandmother has made a pact with this evil priest who also happens to be a vampire to remain immortal she reappears as this vampiric young woman and there's also Orlik who is Valerie's kind of brother not brother who tries to save her from the various scenarios as this priest comes to town with the carnival and he starts to corrupt young women but the underlying story really is this coming of age it's about how Valerie suddenly becomes aware of how people react to her burgeoning sexuality. And at parts, she is like the temptress. She's fully in control of that. And she realises that it is a, 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 it has powerful, potent aspects that she may be able to manipulate. At other times, she is very unsure of herself as she meets predators but this erupting force and this sexual curiosity within her is pitched as something pure and something very strong and even has redemptive qualities it has a healing quality 
to it because Valerie is a, a very pure character, even though she is innately sexual at certain times in the plot. We see her watching people, older women, uh, having sex. We see her fascinated with the bodies of older women. And I think the film really unpicks that difficult passage through puberty for young women where on one hand there is a curiosity about sex and on the other hand everyone around you is warning you about predators or you're getting unwanted attention or suddenly people are treating you differently because of your body. How does this fit into satanic feminism? Well, it has this occult theme to it. It has... uh, Valerie has like magical powers. I wouldn't say she was necessarily a witch. But there is a part when she's burnt as a witch, but she has these magic earrings that everybody wants to get their hands on. And they can they can transport her from danger. They can do all these things. So it has an undertone of witchcraft. In the Valerie is very in tune with this innate sense of magical power this very feminine sense of magical power that she's probably been born with and the film really celebrates that the witch figure or valerie as a witch figure in the film is seen as something of a hero she is the hero she's the heroine you know and her magic like her sexuality are pure things and that's why i'm including it in this series i think it's a film that some people struggle to unpick because of its strange nature but as i said in the commentary that i did with mike white and sam deegan for the second run blu-ray release this film quite clearly influenced angela carter in the company of walls And there is an intersection between the stories. They're both very similar stories. The Company of Wolves just takes a more logical route, obviously then made into a film by Neil Jordan with a script by Angela Carter, but first appeared in The Bloody Chamber, which was a feminist rewriting of fairy tales. And then in several of her short stories, she used um, lycanthropy to tell these very sex-positive feminist tales about coming of age and women tuning into their bestial side and finding liberation through that kind of making a pact with the devil in the way the the monster and not being the good girl Uh, that film though and the stories obviously share something in common with valerie and so it's a point of navigation it makes a really good double bill to put those two side by side because they both start with the onset of menstruation and use things like folklore and fairy tale to show how a young girl has to navigate puberty and make a deal with the beast. You know, you can either be afraid of the beast or you can embrace the beast and become the beast. Valerie is much more dreamlike. It occupies this complete surreal dream world, which is very much the sentiment of the original book even though Nez Val called it his ode to Gothic literature, it's nothing like the Western European Gothic that we're used to, the Bram Stokers and the Mary Shelleys and the Fannies and whatever, it's nothing like that, nothing formal about it at all, it's completely surreal. Valerie exists in this universe and has this sense of feminine power that can erupt quite naturally through the process of puberty and a lot of these folk tales like to go back to the company of walls for example we see the main protagonist in that warned off embracing these instincts and told to stay on the path don't be curious don't uh, speak to the wrong person never trust a man never do this and it's pretty much the same thing for valerie Although Valerie is open to adventure and by the end of the film we don't really know whether it's all been a dream or, and I know this frustrates some people, but to me I just, I love film like that because it opens up so so much possibility for understanding. At its heart though, I think because of Crumb Back of Her, 
it has this immense sense of of female energy and female power and so i've included it in the satanic feminism because although valerie doesn't necessarily make a pact with the devil she is uh in part on the side of magic she isn't the catholic good girl we see her go to we see her go to church and the vampire is the priest and so as i said the film is incredibly subversive because there is a, a very subtle, I guess, subtle enough to get it through and to, to release in a very, very strict regime, uh, anti-establishment theme. And I talked about that in my main Patreon in regards to Alucarda, which is another film that does that, uh, looking at the hypocrisy of the church. The, the idea of paedophilia in the church is also addressed looking at how the church can often exploit power and Valerie, this natural witch, she is the hero. So that's why I've included it in this season. So like I've said, if you've enjoyed this video, there will be more. And if you want more, there's a link in the description for you to sign up to Patreon. Thank you.